Okay, here's my carburetor. Um, I've actually already done this once, so it's all clean and everything, but just want to show you uh, maybe in a shorter version, because in the other version I talked a lot, like I'm starting to do now. First, you take the top off. I've already switched out the uh, screws on it. Um, they are a standard Phillips head. I've replaced them with the, the hex bolts, so it makes it quite a bit easier to get them off. Uh, I had to make my own washers since I didn't have any that were small enough for it. Uh, you can pick up these uh, hex bolts over at Lowe's. They're a size M5.8 by 14 millimeters. Uh, that's them right there. That's a 16 millimeter though. Uh, I use this 14 millimeters on the top and uh, 16 on the bottom. As you can see, they do go through. Uh, on the bottom, 14 millimeters probably do in both areas, uh, but they're pretty cheap. They're, I think 63, 64 cents a, a, for a bag of two of them. Let me see. Pull the top off. Pull your spring out. This is the spring that they talk about. If you want improved throttle response, you can cut a link off of there. I did not do that. Uh, the other thing that they talk about getting better better throttle response is to uh, cut an extra hole in the slide here. This is the slide. Um, this is your slide needle or your needle uh, that just pops out like that. Um, I did cut it or I did drill an extra little hole there in the slide. It's not the same size as this other one, but I didn't want quite the uh, performance everybody talks about. Uh, so I just cut it, I drilled a smaller hole. There's the needle. Uh, I did take a little bit of uh, uh, aluminum foil to it. I've heard that that sands it down nice and smooth, gets all the, uh, any corrosion off or any extra stuff off. Uh, the one thing I did want to switch on this, they say put two shims on it. I'm just going to start with one. And they also said put the shims above this white spacer. That way you don't have shims just wiggling around. I'm going to put one shim on there. The kit I bought this from actually said put both of them, but I'm finding that that kit is actually fairly uh, rich in its settings. So I'm going to put one spacer on there, drop the needle just a little bit. Uh, to put it back together, just drop the needle back down in there. Drop it down in your carburetor. Clean it out if you need to. If you do clean it, make sure and take out all the rubber parts uh, because that will corrode them. Make sure that you get your needle down in that little hole right there. Slides easily, obviously because I don't have a spring in it yet. Pop the spring back on there. Line up the... Uh, there's a little exhaust hole here. Make sure that that lines up there. Make sure your diaphragms good all the way around and then put your screws on so this kit I bought is from uh, a company out in California called Six Sigma I bought the kit on eBay because it had all the jets that I needed and they gave me instructions on how to do everything and it was a lot cheaper than a dyno jet kit uh, the main difference that I've seen between this kit and the dyno jet kit uh, the Six Sigma kit does not give you the uh, a new needle and it does not give you a new uh, fuel to air mixture jet. And I know these things were originally tightened down pretty good so I'm going to go ahead and tighten them down. We don't want any air leaks or vacuum leaks. Uh, and of course, on the new ones, I put in uh, lock washers and a flat washer to protect the plastic from the lock washer. Now, if we flip it over, here's your float bowl. First time you take it off, it'll probably have gas in it. What you can do is take this screw right here, unscrew that, and that'll drain all the gas out of this little hole in the bottom. Make sure to put a pan under it or hook a tube on it so you can get the gas out appropriately. That does not do anything else that I can tell. Of course, there's your idle screw. Um, there's your throttle uh, that of course opens up the butterfly valve 
and uh, activates the vacuum in here that will actually raise your needle in your slide, suck more gas in from the float bowl down here. So now we're going to open the float bowl, pop those screws out. Again, these are the uh, 16 millimeter screws that I got at Lowe's. Take that off. This is usually where you'll see gas deposits down in here. Take some carburetor clean that, cleaner to clean that out. Be sure to take this little uh, rubber O-ring off. Not really an O-ring, but a gasket. Take that off before you clean it out because it will corrode that. Um, just get down there, spray it real good with some carburetor cleaner. Make sure to wear goggles because it will spray up in your face. Um, and let it sit for a little while. Uh, this is the basic float bowl. Uh, there's your float. Moves up and down. There's your main jet. You can actually remove this float uh, just by pulling up on it a little bit there and it pops right out. You'll notice there's two O-rings there. Don't lose those. They probably won't fall off but you probably need to check them if your bike's got a few miles on it. Mine's only got 600 miles on it total so the O-rings on it are still good. Uh, there's a bunch of little jets on here too that I'm not sure what they do. There's a little brass one down in there. You know, little tubes going all the way around through this and stuff. Anyway, I'm not going to mess with that because it's set right. Now here, you've got your main jet here uh, and your, I believe this is your pilot jet down there. I'm not entirely sure. I believe that is your pilot jet. Uh, you can take both of them out with a flathead screwdriver. For the pilot jet, you'll need to get a smaller screwdriver, get it down in there and take it out. This kit recommended that I bump the main jet up to a 152 uh, if I don't do any modifications to the airbox and it said if I do do any uh, modifications to the airbox put in a 157.5 um, I've already cut two inch holes in my airbox I'll show you those later um, but I think I'm gonna uh, try going with the 157.5 just you know to try it out um, and then I've got the uh, the standard size that came with this one here, which I believe is a 47.5 uh, on the on the pilot jet. Um, the uh, air mixture screw right here. Usually there's a little cover over the top of it. The guy who owned this bike before me had already taken it out. This kit says to t to to screw that in to screw or screw it in all the way, and then screw it out two and a half screws. From what I've read online, at Thumper Talk Adventure Rider. Um, two wheel Texans, all these different sites, they all say start at like one and a half, maybe one and an eighth, one and a quarter around there. So, since I didn't want to mess with it, I've actually um, purchased a, uh, a different jet online from ProCycle. I'll give them a little shout out. ProCycle! They gave me some uh, stickers with the order. I'm basically going to switch that jet out for this new one that has a thumb screw. I know you can also get these at Keen, uh, Keen Tech Engineering uh, and on a lot of other sites. This one I think is around $15 or $16, but as you can see, same jet on the bottom, but the top has a little thumb screw. So that makes it much easier to adjust it while it's on the bike rather than trying to get a uh, screwdriver in there and stuff. And you'll notice it actually has a flat part on the side of the screw. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little flat part that's ground down that's so that you can tell how many screws out you are instead of just, you know, trying to guess. Anyway, I'll screw that in all the way till it's seated right there. It looks like it seats on this side with the flat part on that side. So I'll go out one full screw to there. And then uh, I'm thinking I'll go one and a quarter just to kind of be conservative on that. I don't know how that's going to play out with my uh, larger main jet. But, uh, we'll see. I've got a couple of graphs that kind of show where each quarter of your throttle should be. Um, you can find that on another page. I don't have it with me in here now. I'm going to go ahead and put this all back together. Drop my uh, floats back in there. Make sure that the floats are free floating and that everything is in there tight. I don't think it clicks or anything. 
drop the uh, clean body on there. And uh, we'll drop these screws in it, tighten it up. When I tighten things, I usually will go back and forth on them a couple of times. That's just how we do with lug nuts, so. My guess is it will prevent warping. Now another issue that I had uh, when I took my carburetor off was the uh, the choke was completely rusted out. I always thought my choke cable worked um, because it was fairly loose up top and I could wiggle it. Come to find out that it was completely rusted down inside. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, but it was completely rusted down to the point where it actually broke when I tried to pull it through the the cable housing with some, some uh, vice grips. Um, but anyway, I wanted my bike to look good. Didn't want to mess with it for now, so uh, I went ahead and bought the modified choke. But I will keep this other one just in case. Anyway, while I've got this off the bike, I can just go ahead and throw the choke in there. It's not going to mess with anything. Just slide it down in there. Tighten it up. And there's my choke. bike. Alright, as far as carburetors go, that's it. Um, so I'm going with the 157 main, right? 157.5 main, the uh, 42.5 pilot, uh, one and a quarter screws out, or one and a quarter turns out on the, the air mixture jet, hole in the slide, and um, and I'm a single shim on the needle. We'll see how that works. Okay, so here we are back in the bike. Um, of course, we still got the uh, cylinder plugged up there so nothing gets down in there. These are the holes that I drilled in the top of the airbox. Uh, I took the snorkel out that normally goes here. This is it right here. That's what the snorkel looks like. It usually sits down in there and you just see the top half of it like that. You pull it out. Drill a couple of holes in there with a hole saw, saw and uh, open things up a bit. I still have the stock air filter in there. I do have a uh, twin air air filter, but I do not have the oil to go with it yet. So I'm going to look online and see what oil needs to oil that. Uh, I was hoping it could just be some light viscosity stuff. Also, a lot of people ask what this little filter is for here. If you follow that, that goes down into your carburetor. And that is the uh, the filter that keeps the top of your carburetor clean uh, up uh, up above the diaphragm. I don't really think that that is doing a very good job because the top of my carburetor is really really dirty. So uh, I got another filter from ProCycle. That is this little uh, Uni breather breather air filter. This was I don't know like 12, 13, 14 bucks. I don't know. Um, just pops off, pops right on there, and uh, I think it'll do a much better job than this little guy. This got a little bit of foam down in there, but I think mine was cracked last time I felt down in there, uh, and it was really dirty. So uh, I'm gonna swap that out, see if I can't move it a little bit to get it out of the way, and uh, we'll put the carburetor back in. All right, well here we are. Uh, I've got the gas tank back on. Uh, just taking a look at things. When you put the gas tank back on, be sure and hook up your main fuel line right here. Uh, and the uh, vacuum hose goes into the back of the carburetor on the other side. There's also a hose that comes off the back side of the carburetor that just kind of hangs out, it seems like. I don't know if that needs a filter or not, but I will definitely check into that. Um, as you can see here, there's my little choke knob. Still very accessible, uh, easy to get to. Uh, I think it'll be a nice addition. Um, still got to put the seat on, and I'm going to fire it up, take it for a spin.